When in the book of heaven, and all accomplished and in for sins unforgiven, my name was at the top, and many things below. I went on to the keeper, and I said, long ago.
home today, just before you take your liberty, just before you take your seat, hold your Bibles in your hands real quickly. Stand, keep standing. You can sit right after. Hold your Bibles in your hands. It's the intent of us that we're here for you to settle your account. You're owing a debt that you need to talk to Jesus about. Pastor can't help you. I can't help you. But if you go to Jesus and settle it today by baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, so shall I. For the next one hour, I promise you I'll be out of your hearing by 208 and 54 seconds. And you can do anything you want to do after that. Ezekiel chapter number 37. Ezekiel chapter number 37. In the interest of time, I'm going to run through this quickly. Ezekiel chapter 37. Hallelujah. As I oftentimes said, if you find yourself at Daniel, it means you've gone too far. Careful because my is full of hills. You don't want to cause an accident. Don't go down the cliff. But look to make a turn, turn around and come back to Ezekiel Avenue. Lot number 37 if you haven't say amen. amen. Ezekiel 37, these words are recorded. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. He caused me to pass by them, round about them, and behold, there were very many in the open valley. Somebody say open valley. Open. We talk about open rivers on Friday night. Somebody say open valley. Open. And they were very dry. Somebody say dry. dry. We're coming out of the dry season. Somebody say dry. dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. He said unto me, prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and he shall live. Somebody say live. Amen. And I will lay sinews upon you, and bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin. Put breath in you, and he shall live, and shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And they behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And when I behold, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them about, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, God said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these. And so I prophesied as I commanded, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, this is the story now, I could have read this verse before I read everything else. He said unto me, son of man, these that you see living, let me tell you something, these are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say the bones are dry. Come on, they say that our hope is lost. They say we are cut off from our parts. Hallelujah. Therefore prophesy. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word that is already blessed. We pray, God, that you will save somebody. Fill somebody with the gift of the Holy Ghost. We ask that your presence continue to dwell with us in this convocation. God, somebody came in here with an expectation. Somebody needs something from you that I cannot give. God, I don't know what they need. I don't know what to share. My God, I can't cook but just one meat per day. And somebody needs goat, somebody need pork, somebody need chicken, somebody need a word, God, that I just don't know. Father, you have it. Lord, you know it all thing. And I pray, God, that you will touch every heart, touch every mind. In the name of Jesus, save the soul of everybody. Hallelujah. That will come to an understanding of who you are. That we can live, we shall live. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how dry our bones are. God, there is yet another chance for us. Bless that to my cover as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. While you take your seat, I want you to find two persons and tell them there's hope in your dry valley. Come on, tell them there's hope in your dry valley. Hallelujah. Come on, say there's hope in your dry valley. Dry bone, hear the word of the Lord. 
there is hope in your dry body. You may be seated. You may be seated. It's 110. Hallelujah. Let me try and work through this as quickly as we can. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We get on give honor to the Spirit of God. Greetings to your pastor. Hallelujah. To Deacon Baptiste. To Pastor Baptiste. To the family. To all the saints and the visiting friends. Little children. Hallelujah. For everyone. Hallelujah. That are visiting from out of town or in town. We thank God for you. I want you to know we appreciate you. Come on more time. Bless them one more time. Hallelujah. You could have gone anywhere to any district, to any parish, to any church, but you chose us because of divine appointment and God would have had you to be here. Hallelujah. This afternoon just to hear what he has to say to you and so we appreciate you and we love you. This is why we're here. Hallelujah. To tell you the good news, the story. Hallelujah. Some of you have been getting all bad news from last year, from the year started, but I came from Canada and bring you good news. Somebody say good news. Somebody say good news. Somebody say good news. That's the good news of the salvation plan that Jesus saves. That's the gospel. The good news have come unto man. So God bless you. I bring greetings one more time from the presiding bishop, Dr. L.C. Carley. He says to greet you, to love you, and God bless you in Jesus' name. There is hope in your dry body. It is to our town and the hymnist who said, there is a hope that burns within my heart. He says, there's a hope that gives me strength for every passing day. A glimpse of glory now revealing meager part, yet drives all my doubts and fears away. He says, I stand in Christ with sins forgiven, and Christ in me the hope of heaven. That when the world has plunged me in its deepest pit, I will find the Savior there. Hope, brothers and sisters, is simply an expectation or a desire for a particular thing to happen. Hope speaks to anticipation. Hope speaks to aspiration. It speaks to looking for, expecting while waiting. The Hebrew word, tikva, T-I-Q-V-A-H, it's a hope that is interwoven. It's a hope that doesn't disappoint. It's a hope that allows you to wait on the Lord and still trust he's going to come true to you for you. It's the same root word as the word to wait, the tikva. It's a great hope or trust. That's why the psalmist David said in the 20th division of the psalm, verse 7, he said, Some tikva, some trust in chariots. He says, Some trust in horses. He said, But we will trust and remember the name of the Lord our God. So I come to tell you today, so in times of trouble, in times of distress, in times of depression, Hallelujah. we have got to learn to put our trust in God. We have got to wait upon Him because we know in whom we believe and we know that He will come through for us. There is nothing that is too hard for our God to do. There is no disease that is too much for Him to cleanse. You can't do too much, kill too much, I do nothing too bad that God love cannot reach you. And that's why we have to learn to put our trust in Him because He's an all-time God and an all-purpose God. One songwriter put it like this, Pastor, when he said, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus said the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, uh, how I trust him. Can you trust him when you're going through? Can you trust him? How, how I prove him or and or. Just whisper that name right where you are. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm, I'm just so glad that I, I learned to trust him. Come on, somebody. He's a precious Jesus. He, he's a savior and a friend. And I, I know that he 
is with me will be with me to the end. If you know that, somebody just say Jesus. If you know that he will be with you to the end, somebody just say Jesus. My God Almighty, if you don't talk back to me, I think you enjoy me and I'll go over the hour. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, this just, this hallelujah hope is something that we have to come with. And brothers and sisters, it makes no sense that you dress up, wash up, uh, and drive up, come up, and just sit up and say nothing. If you're here, and you came here with a purpose, you need, hallelujah, to have a hope or an expectation every time you walk into the church of God, you have got to have an expectation that God is going to do something supernatural in my life. Uh, yes, come on somebody. If you never come here with an expectation, now get an expectation that God is going to do something for me. If you really want to see pastor, you can come on a Monday, you can come on a Tuesday, come and look for her. She'll be here working and you can sit and talk to her. But if you come, hallelujah, when it's church time, you've got to come with an expectation that God is going to do something supernatural in my life. Is there anybody here who came with an expectation? You came with a hope. Hallelujah. You have got to put your trust in God. The psalmist David said in the 125 division of the psalm, verse 1, that they that put their trust in God shall be like Mount Zion and they shall not be moved. Brothers and sisters, you might go through situations in your life. You might have been disappointed. You may go through lots of stuff and sometimes you, you don't know who to trust and who you put your hope and your trust in. But I came to tell you this morning that you got to put your trust in God. It is Charles Spurgeon and I quote, and Charles Spurgeon said this, he said, hope is like a star. He said, it's like a star, brother Eddie, because it's not seen in the sunshine of prosperity, but is discovered in the darkness of adversity. Can I say that again? Do you understand? He said, hope is like a star that you see, but he said, you cannot see it in the sunshine of prosperity, but you will see it in the darkness of adversity. And I encode. In other words, what he's saying is that your hope has to be so resolute by God because you don't see a star in the day. If you go outside now in the sunshine, you will never see a star. For you to see a star, there has to be darkness in the oh God. And so sometimes you're going through some darkness, but you have still got to put your hope and your trust in God. Somebody say trust, somebody say hope. Yes, you no matter what you're going through, you got to say, I will still hope in God. Why are you cast down? Oh, my soul, why are you disquieted within me? Somebody's struggling with themselves and wondering why. He said, I'm always discouraged. Why is it I'm struggling so much? But I heard the writer say, hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. Is there anybody in here with a yet praise? Just jump up and just give God a shout. If you brought the yet praise, I'm going to show what I brought the yet praise. Come on, Mount Zion, Dominica. You better jump up and shout. Yes. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sit down, sit down. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, hallelujah. Israel hoped to be delivered from the enemy out of captivity in Babylon. Israel, the sick hope to recover from their illness. Uh, Israel, they hope to return to the land Jerusalem. Uh, and they trust that God will provide rain, provision, peace, and prosperity. The children of God, the saints of the Most High, understand uh, that our hope is not based on uh, what is going on in our life. Uh, our hope is not based on how we feel. Uh, if it was based on how I feel, Lord have mercy. I would come to church, sit down, cross my legs, get ready for Brother Leslie. Hallelujah. Bread and cheese. At the 
service, but because my hope is not built out of how I feel, out of what I'm going through, but my hope is built out of who I'm going through with. I wish I had a church in here. He, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear no evil because he is with me. The reason why I can still have my hope in spite of the fact that I'm walking through the valley and I'm going through the wilderness is because of who is with me. Some of you are looking at me funny like you don't know who is with you. Lord have mercy. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus is walking with me. Come on somebody. He walks with me and he talks with me. He tells me, oh, I am his own. I'm the joy and peace. I don't hear the church. I don't hear the church. Lord have mercy. I'm so thankful. This hope and trust I have, Sister Myrna, I have in Jesus. It allows me to live today in agony and pain. But I have an assurance of a better tomorrow. In other words, what I'm going through today, the agony, the pain, the problem, the financial trouble, does not stop me from seeing the assurance and the hope of a better tomorrow. Oh yes. I don't know about you, but I've gone through it. And it gets rough sometimes in Canada. All of you have money, all of you have what you want, you don't need nothing. I know all of you just got it like that, you can do as you want. But where we come from, we struggle. But we have to have the hope and the trust that in spite of it, that God will come true for us. This is why Paul said in Romans chapter 8 verse 18, that Paul said, I reckon that I realize that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. In other words, where I am right now cannot stop me from the better place that I'm going. Somebody say better, somebody say better. Hallelujah. Neighbor, I see a better glory. Somebody say better. Hallelujah. Somebody say better. Look at your neighbor and say, I think better is coming. Yes. Come on, tell your neighbor, better is coming to my house. Some of you don't want it. You don't know the importance of a spoken word. Tell them there's better, better. Say so there's a better ending for me. The Bible talks about a better tabernacle. Hallelujah. Talk about a better life. A better country and a better place. Somebody say better, 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 better. Man lost his position. Man lost his position. 
position. Man lost his power. That man lost his glory. Come on, somebody. Yes. This is why we're in what we're in. Because any time man sin against God, man lose everything. I don't hear the church. Sin brought death unto man. This is why the Bible says, because some of you are behaving like you don't sin. Yes. But the Bible said in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, Psalm 51, you were born in sin. You were shaped in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. Why did this happen, preacher? Because Romans 5.12 tells me that for my one Man, sin entered the world. I sin, no oh Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. I so sin brought death, and death passed to all men. So when man sinned in the Garden of Eden, man lost everything. Man lost the good place that he used to live. Man lost the good position. Man lost the good position. Man lost the good power. And man lost the glory of God that covered him. Because sin will separate you. Hallelujah from God. Oh yes, it will. God doesn't love sin. Sin is ugly. And the reason why you can feel him like you should is because there is sin that is dwelling in your camp. Come here, Isaiah, come here. Where's Isaiah? Isaiah 59, verse 2. Isaiah said, your iniquities have separated you from your God. And he said, your sins have hid his face from you. In other words, any time man sin, there's a separation. Oh, yes, there is. Yes, sin caused man to be separated from God. God said it in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 2, 17, when he gave them the commandment, he said, Look here. He said, in the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. Brothers and sisters, it wasn't just spiritual death, but it was natural death. Man died naturally, and man died spiritually. Oh, yes, they did. Because the Bible said, in the day, yes. In other words, Peter said it when he got the revelation. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, Peter said, a thousand years is like a day in the sight of God. In other words, if God said you're going to die in the day, and a thousand years is like a day, nobody ever lived over a thousand years. Because you've got to die within the day. The longest liver Methuselah lived 969 years. Because death was passed unto man. Sin caused a separation. Lord have mercy. But thanks be to God. There is still a hope mm -hmm, for every one of us. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. I know I mess up. I know I did wrong, but there is hope. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody said there is hope. There is hope. I know the Catholic Church tell me I can't just say hey. Somebody said there is hope, there is hope, there is hope. I don't hear the church. I shut up. Manda Katasaya. Israel. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing good. Israel in my time. In this text, experienced death pass because of sin. I'm getting there. Israel defiled the temple of Jehovah. They were unclean, sister. Man. They were impure. They polluted, defiled, unholy. They practiced idolatry. And I was just doing adultery, greed, hatred, pride, lust took over the temple. So God had to leave the temper. Lord have mercy. Anytime there is sin, God can dwell there. Lord have mercy. This is why I'm trying to say to you. We have got to wash away the sins that is in our lives. That the glory can return because we are now the temper of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So we can do as we like, say as we like, and think.
think that we have what it takes. We decide what we can do to go to heaven. I bring news to you. There is only one way to get there. And so the glory left. When he looked, he saw the glory. Leaving my God, the temper. Ezekiel looked, he saw the glory. Leaving the east gate. When he looked, he saw the glory. Leaving from between the cherubims. He saw the glory. Leaving Jerusalem. But Ezekiel, brothers and sisters, at the age of 25, he was carried captive into Babylon with the upper class of the second deportation. He lived with the exile. He witnessed Nebuchadnezzar destroying Jerusalem by flattening the walls, the gate. He they burned down the houses in Jerusalem at the temple. But the Lord showed Ezekiel, hallelujah, Israel restoration after the exile. Ezekiel was considered to be a restoration prophet. In other words, God tell me to tell you, there is still hope. Yes. I know, my God, the valley is very dry, but there is still hope. He showed Ezekiel the ministry of restoration. Restoration, brothers and sisters, is the act of returning something to its former condition, to its former place, and to its former order. Can I say that again? Remember when we sin, what did we lose? We lost the place, we lost the possession, we lost the power, we lost the possession, and we lost the glory. But God showed Ezekiel the restoration of Jerusalem. God showed Ezekiel. Come on, somebody. Restoration is the act of returning something to its former condition, to its former place, and to its former order. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, come on, talk with me now. Say, neighbor, 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 good neighbor. Somebody look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Jesus Christ, Lord have mercy. Neighbor, hallelujah. I'm going back to my own. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor one more time. I said, neighbor, I'm a brand new man. Look at your neighbor to restore. I don't know how many of you have ever seen an old building, a factory or something, and all of a sudden you see them painting it up, they're restoring it, and they put the name under it, but there's a new management, Lord have mercy. is 
restoration. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Some of you don't know what I'm saying. But I don't got the time. I got to keep it. Number one is replace or repent. For you to be restored, you got to replace your heart. Repent. Hallelujah. You got to renew. Number two, your mind. Number three, you got to revive your soul. Number four, you got to reconnect with God. I don't got time to get through there. I got to get to my text. Because I got about just 20 minutes here. But the Bible says, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, Ezekiel 37 that the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out into the spirit. Remember Ezekiel was in bondage and in exile. He was in distress. Is there an Ezekiel in here today? Remember Ezekiel was in exile but the hand of the Lord was to assignment and purpose. I know some of you, you're not yet baptized in the name of Jesus, but the hand of the Lord has been upon you. That's why you keep coming here, because you're searching for something. God has an assignment. God has a purpose for
in your little bag and say, this is carry on. This you can carry with you on the plane. Huh? Yes. So you can carry it in your jacket everywhere you go. And some of you carry, you carry on your hand luggage. Everywhere you go, you carry. Yes. Some of you just have carry on problems. Some have problems that are big soft, you have to check it on. You, you, you can't carry it, it's big. Not, not your little stuff. It's big stuff. When you wear it, you are overweight. You, you just gotta put it on the bed and make it up. Watch it just go, oh God Almighty. Hallelujah. Somebody throw up your hand. I said, Lord, carry me. Say, Lord, carry me. Say, Lord, carry me. Go to the check on two stuff. Carry me, Jesus. Carry me, Jesus. I'm checking on some heavy stuff. Carry me, Jesus. Get back, die. Hear the word of the Lord. He that believeth and 
came with a death situation. Read Ephesians. Ephesians 2 verse 12 tells us that at that time, you see, at that time, in time past, Gentiles, Hallelujah. we were without Christ in the flesh, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenant of the promise. But he said, we had no hope in this world because we didn't have God. But he said, no, in Christ, to the place, no, in Christ, we are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The only way you can get back your good place, your good position, your good position, your good power, you got to get back in Christ. At that time we had no hope. We were strangers from the covenant of promise. We were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We didn't have God. But now, in Christ, we are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. Amen. This is why, and I'm getting to the close in five minutes. This is why somewhere this is my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus. I'm Christ the Son. Somebody said the blood of Jesus. Somebody said the blood of Jesus. Somebody said the blood of Jesus. You are made nigh by the blood. What can wash away my sins? Don't hear the church. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again, Pastor? Nothing but the blood. Oh, precious. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see. Jesus, nothing but the blood. Jesus, somebody said the blood. So, the valley had Tribals. Yes. Mighty God. Tribals. Yes. Bones that had no sustenance. Bones that were scattered. Yes. Scattered, my God. When you study the body, every one of us made up of about 206 bones. Yeah. Yeah. The bones are made up of connective tissue. Yeah. The purpose of the bone is actually to hold the body together. Yeah. Yeah. It helps you to move free because your bones you can move free. But the bone protects some delicate internal bones. Like your heart, your lungs, your brain. So the bones were scattered. Bones were dry. But God says, prophesy. I'm closing, I'm closing. God sent a word to say there is hope in your valley. He is the resurrection of the night. He has power to raise the dead. He said to tell you, it doesn't matter how far you think you are gone. He said it doesn't matter how long you think you are gone. He says, I send a word, hallelujah, to prophesy to your dead situation. I send a word to raise you up. I send a word to lift you out of your condition. The Bible said that is seeking prophesy. I want to speak a word over you. You 
walk into your valley and you're here, but your mind is so, hallelujah, you're so confused. You don't know where to turn. You don't know what to do. You, yeah, yeah, yes, you're going through it. And you're here, but you, you need a peace of mind. And you're here, but you're a little bit confused. You're, you're here, but you're, you're stubborn to your own beliefs. God sent me to give you a word. Hallelujah, in your valley. I came to prophesy that every dead situation in you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, enemy, go in home. Hallelujah. He come, I come to prophesy that you shall live and not die. I came to prophesy that you shall sing again. You, you shall pray again. I come to prophesy that you shall be baptized in Jesus' name. I come to prophesy that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I come to prophesy. Some of you need to prophesy over your life. Come on, everybody get up. We're closing. Everybody stand up in the house. And I want you to prophesy to yourself. The Bible said he prophesied. Speak a word. You got to learn to speak a word over your life. Say, I shall live. Say, it is well. Say, I shall receive it. So you want to jump. Yes, you, you need the resume. Prophesy. Say, it's mine. Prophesy. You need the house. I don't hear the church. Hallelujah.
prophesy. I praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Life, my God. The reason why you start get old is because I refuse to praise God. That's why the star looks so old. If you praise God, wrinkles your heart. You don't give me a Somebody praise him. As long as Jesus was on the cross, if he keep talking, he couldn't die. Because all comes out of Jesus is life. That's it. I don't like it. If Jesus kept talking on the cross, he would never die. But the sixth thing he said, he said, it is finished. Then he said, I commend my spirit into your hands, God. If you commend your spirit into God's hand, it is finished. Hallelujah. You will rise again. You will praise again. The Bible said he prophesied until all of a sudden he heard a shaking. He was a shift in the valley. I don't know about you, but I feel a shift. I feel a shift. There's a, there's a shift. 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 God is doing something different. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him. 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 Because when he made man, 
Man was like a mannequin. Thank you, Lord. It is just so negative. You can't say nothing positive about yourself. True. Lord, 
You can't even sound beautiful. Because the last cuff you have calling at your mother. My God! Listen, it's not about the preacher. I'm going to give you one last time. It's not about the preacher. It's about the God. If I teach you anything, whenever you come into the house of God, always have an expectation. God bless you. Very 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 always have an expectation. Don't just come here for, for bread, for bread, food, or for things. No. Come with an expectation that God, I want to meet you and I want you to do something supernatural in my life. I want you to think about something that you want God to do for you. You don't have to say it, just think about it. Everybody stand. Everybody, as long as you can stand, you know, I want you to stand. I want you to think about something. I want you to think about something, expectation, that you want God to do for you. And, and don't, 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 don't do the carry on stuff. I want to check on. It's too heavy, it's so big. You can't go in the plane with you. I want to check on for God. There's going to be a shift. I want you to think, you think about it, you think about it. Something that you think is impossible to do. When he said you couldn't give birth. Something that you think is impossible. When he said you will never have a husband. When the devil tell you all that stuff that you will, you will never experience the power of God. You don't have to live, see, you don't have to serve the devil. There is hope. And that hope is in the blood of Jesus. Oh, yes, it is. Everybody, you have an expectation? Yes. If you have your expectation in your mind, raise your hand. Just raise your hands. If you have your expectation. No, no, I want you to listen to me because it's very important. It's very important. Listen to me. God said, I will put my breath in you. He will breathe in you. If it's his breath, then he says, let everything that have who's bread? Whose bread is it? His bread. He quotes you his bread. He says, I want you to think about that which you are expecting. Hallelujah. And I I, I don't you, you don't have to be too loud, but I want you to echo it over your mouth. I want you to speak it. And I say, Lord, let me I want you to speak it. It's alright, you never know how to give but, but speak it. If you want to speak loud, it's fine, but speak it. No, don't just keep it in your mind. I want you to open your mouth. It must be uttered. It must be uttered. Open your mouth and say it. Just open your mouth and say it. Everybody, just open your mouth and say it. 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 You're saying it now with a hope. You're saying it 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 with a hope. There's a shift coming to your house. There's a shift coming to your life when you say it with God.
I have in mind tonight. Uh, that's the one giving instructions. We have a few people for baptism. Amen. And we have close with you who God just spoke to. In your valley, there is hope. Where you go? There is hope. He will restore you. He will restore you. He will restore you. Thank you, Jesus. Come here, sis. Come here. Come here. Yes, you come here. Come here. Come here. Walk up. Come here. You come to this church? She comes to this church? You still? Mm -hmm. God tell me that he wants to. I don't know what he wants you to do here. She comes to this church. You still come to this church. She so don't come to this church. You still go to church. You still go to church.